Hey guys, hope you're well. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back today with the long-awaited lounge tour. That's the room that I was looking for. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to show you all the way around my lounge or living room, whatever you want to call it. And as we go around, I'm going to give you all of my little tips and tricks, show you things that I've rescued from the skip, show you things that I've got from charity shops, show you things that I've got from homeware stores, things that I've upcycled, and hopefully you'll find it inspiring and enjoyable. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you are new here, but let's get straight into it. First thing you see when you come in is the bar cart. Excuse the cables down there with my camera batteries and also the smart meter that we never seem to bother plugging in. But yeah, we have the bar cart here. I've just put some plants on the top of it. Um, I found that we don't actually use the top of it for preparing drinks as um, we're right next to the table here. So yeah, I've just put these plants on it. You've seen this tray before from a thrift store. Got a Dipti candle there. That uh, container's from Ikea, and I've put this long stem in it from Abigail Lahern, which I think works really well because it draws the eye up to this painting that my mum did. So my mum studied here in London at the Royal Academy. Previous to that, she was actually a student in Camberwell, which is uh, very close to where I live. So it's quite nice that this painting, which I think was one of her sort of original student ones, is now back in its original area. I guess it was actually in the shed. A little tip for any of you guys who've just moved into a new place, go and scour your parents' sheds and garages. You never know what they might have in there that you might be able to loan from them. <laughs> so that's the uh, bar cart. You can check out the tutorial for that. Um, I will try and link that in for you. And then we've got some drinks down the bottom. And then this container, I forget where that came from. And that is just full of tea lights some glasses from a thrift store and some more that my mum picked up for me and these pineapple uh, shot glasses were a gift from friends of mine which are really really nice and go uh, really well with the bar cart. Do excuse the skirting boards, we recently moved the uh, phone line so we had to rip the phone line out from there and you can see just how old they are and there's even a little hole there that probably is where our friend the mouse likes to uh, crawl through. We did get all the light fittings and the plug sockets changed when we moved in and we went for this nickel kind of colour. I'm still pleased with it. It's nearly uh, 10 years later since we moved into this property and I feel like that still sort of hasn't gone out of fashion. I think it's pretty timeless if a little bit grubby. <laughs> but um, yeah, so if any of you are sort of contemplating on what to get for your fittings, I think that's a pretty safe uh, bet. Now the door I actually got off a skip. You're going to see a lot of items in this room that I got off the skip. Um, but yeah, so I fitted this um, myself while we did it together. I just wanted something a bit more traditional and I really liked this rustic wood. It's quite sort of farmhouse, country cottage, which not necessarily uh, the usual style for a London property, but I really liked it. It had its doorknobs on already, so that was really cool. The only tricky thing is, oh, let me just show you. The uh, doorstop is actually a bookend that my mum got for me with a polished fossil in it. The only thing is, as you will see in our crazy house, everything's a bit wonky. So we had to fit this piece of wood in across here to make it straight. What a wonky house we live in, but I like it, it's cool. It fitted some really ugly, plain old fire doors in there, so had to go. So then over here is the table. So another item that I did find out and about. So someone had left this table out. The top had gone pretty rotten. There's a staple on there, that's annoying. And, um, and yeah, but I thought we can do something with that. And we did, we literally just scrubbed the top off. I didn't even bother treating it. I just left it rough and ready because I really like the look of it. I take loads of pictures on here. I do my DIYs on this. Don't have to worry if it gets a bit mucky. It's already mucky, so it's perfect for me and my messy DIYs. Um, as you can see, I've got my laptop here. I do spend a lot of time working at this table because we've got all the lights streaming in through the triple window and it's a really nice place to work and watch the world go by. Now this table is usually covered in junk, but I did make an effort to tidy it up for you. But um, I always have some flowers on the go and at the moment I've got these hyacinth bouquets, <laughs> hyacinth buckets, and uh, they smell amazing from my local florist and they're in this uh, mason jar, I guess you'd call that, from New Look. Yes, New Look do do a little bit of homeware in case you didn't know, 
They have a very small range, but the things that they do tend to be quite nice. So if you like uh, homeware, do check them out. That bag there is just what I keep my camera in. And then we're not really coaster people. Like we certainly wouldn't mind if you put a mug down anywhere in our home, we're not fussy. Same with shoes, you can wear your shoes in here. But um, these are just a set that I got from one of those tourist shops while we were in Monaco. As many of you will know, that is one of our favorite holiday destinations where we try to go at least once every year or two. Uh, it's just somewhere we really love going back to with our friends and we always have a brilliant time there. If you want to uh, know a bit more about uh, why I like going on holiday there so much, I have done a blog post uh, which I will link below for you so you can have a read of that if you want to. And from Monaco onto Paris, which is tricky to show you because of the reflections. Let's go around this side. Is that better? Yes, so this frame came from a charity shop and the map inside is actually one that I created myself. So basically I ordered the very simple photocopied printout of a Paris map from eBay for just a few pounds and I got a set of watercolors and I watercolored it all. So as you can see, I just went for muted vintage looking colours, made it up as I went along and sat there one evening in front of the TV and coloured that in. And then I got a bit of tea staining on the go to try and make it look even older. And I scrumpled it all up and then put it back out again and did that a few times and put some creases through it. And I think now, every time people come around here, they always ask, where did you get the map? Because they're quite tricky to come by these great big maps and they're also very, very expensive if you go for an original one. So that's a little tip for you. Have a go at DIYing one. And I kind of handpicked the colours that I wanted. I wanted it to have these sort of tones in it because I'd actually copied it from a magazine. So basically I just went for the sort of tones that I thought would work well in the room with the other pieces um, all together. These chairs I picked up from an antiques place, Crystal Palace Antiques. And I think I got the two for 120 pounds, which I thought was an absolute steal. They've got kind of leather uh, seat pads and they've got wooden um, handles. I guess they're probably 60s or, um, yeah, maybe 70s, I'm not sure. And then very simple chrome. We had a nightmare getting these in and we ended up having to hoist them up through this window because they wouldn't fit through our hallway. Little did I know that they actually come apart with an Allen key. So they are actually flat pack. I did wonder if they might be Ikea, but they're not Ikea. Unfortunately, they took a bit of a bashing when they came in. So you'll notice that one of the bits is taped on until I get around soldering it. Never mind, we will just uh, put the fur a uh, little throw that I picked up in a charity shop over the back for now and not worry about that. In the corner we've got the rubber plant that's looking a lot healthier since I gave it my little uh, bit of TLC during the plant rescue. I'll link that video as well below if you want to see how I attempted to rescue all of my dying house plants. And then up here is a painting that I picked up when I was a child actually. Um, yeah, a bit random, I know, for a kid to be buying pieces of art, but for some reason, I bought that. It wasn't a lot of money, by the way. I don't think that I could afford big pieces of art when I was a kid, because I certainly couldn't. Um, but this was not in the frame or anything. It was just a watercolour, and it was very reasonably priced at the time in an exhibition in my local town. So I picked it up because I liked it. And then uh, my mum reminded me that I'd got it, so I put it in this frame. And that's just a cheap and cheerful frame and mount from Wilco's. I think this scene is Cornwall. Um, it did say it on the back, but I won't be able to tell you now. But if any of you recognise it, let me know. Where do you think that is? Any of you guys from uh, south of the UK, it might look familiar to you. So the carpet we got when we moved in, it was very reasonable. I think it was about £120 from Carpet Right. I know, crazy. As you can see, it's a little bit grubby and worse for wear because it has done nearly 10 years. Another little tip if you are re-carpeting in a new property is to try to keep the underlay that's already existing there. So keep the carpet down while you're doing any painting and decorating so you don't damage that underlay. And if it's a good one like ours, I think it was called Cloud9, I Googled it and it was a very expensive underlay, then there's no need to replace that because your brand new carpet can go over the top of it and no one will ever know but you're going to save yourself probably a good few hundred pounds by doing that. Now, the shutters in this room were probably the biggest expense, probably one of the biggest expenses we've 
had. So we went for these solid ones. So a lot of shutters will come with a louvre kind of um, thing going on, but we wanted to have solid ones so that we can block out all of the light and solid ones were the way to go for us but these were very expensive i will do a video on all my tips and tricks on choosing these because as i say they are quite a big expense hanging in the window we've got this stained glass bird that my mum got for me which is just really nice because it catches the light in the window and then up here this came from germany and this is like i don't know if you can see it but it's a kind of it's a Christmas ornament, probably primarily, but we have it all year round. And it's called a Hernhuter. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And it's quite a famous design, and yeah, I just think it looks really cool. So it's a nice little um, light that we can switch on for people to see from outside. Down here we've got the rug that my brother got me for Christmas, the Persian rug, which I love. And on top we've got this um, Perspex table and this is by Cartel. We picked this up in the Selfridges sale. And I think a table like this is great for anyone that's lacking a bit of space, because if you can see the skirting behind and the room through it, but it feels like it's not taking up too much space. And I've got uh, one of the succulents growing on there, as well as these crocuses, which have shot up. So hopefully springtime's nearly here. This cable here really bugs me. When we had our sky dish installed, the guy that fitted it said that he could only fit out of the window, so he put it there. I wish I'd kept a closer eye on what he was doing because it really isn't great where it is compared to where the TV is. So a little tip for anyone that's having any sort of sky or cabling installed, be there to keep an eye on them because otherwise they will just put it wherever they fancy. In the corner here we've got this uh, TV unit that I picked up from a charity shop and I've painted it in Farrow and Ball Stifsky Blue and I just swapped the drawer handles on that. Not my favourite piece in the room but I like the colour of it and I do need to sort of sort out the monstrosity of cables behind it, but let's not worry about that for now. Behind it, we've got some colorful lights. They're actually outdoor lights, I think, that I picked up from Lidl. They'll probably end up on the terrace soon, but for now, they're just adding a bit of uh, color to that corner. And then here we have the fireplace. So the fireplace itself, we picked up at a second-hand store. It was wood and we painted it. This is another Farrow and Ball. I think it's all white, but we just went for a sort of nice, well, white, <laughs> I guess, um, and painted it. I think it works really well. And then a couple of other uh, items that I did rescue. So this uh, solid, um, yeah, hearth, I guess, you call it, do you? So this um, was being left out on the street to be thrown away, so, we carried that home. It nearly killed us carrying that home. It was only two streets away, but it was so, so heavy. But I'm really glad that we did because I think it really sets off the fireplace. And considering that that was free and the surround was £45, I think it's looking pretty good. The fire inside is just an electronic one. It's just good for an emergency and it kind of fills up the space. And then another item that I rescued was this suitcase this was also in a skip and we just use that to store our speakers in and it's got that candle holder that i picked up from h&m sitting on it for the time being until i decide what to do with that down here we've got a little collection of things a couple of cactuses a concrete a candle holder and a salt lamp and that's all from Lidl. Then on top we've got this uh, painting really cute little uh, scotty dogs so we framed that and then we've got uh, this pot here from Anthropology. You'll have seen that from my giveaway when I gave one of those away and some uh, fake plants from Abigail Ahern. Then we've got a couple of uh, succulents and cactuses. Tray here from Tiger. This mirror, which is a recent DIY that I've done, you can check out the video for that. I will link that video as well below. I feel like there's gonna be a lot of videos linked below. Apologies if that's annoying, but I wanna make sure that you know how to do everything or where to find it. And then I've got a few more plants and this container here is from Tiger. A charity shop vase with this cool shell design on it and some tulips here which have seen better days. These bulrush stems were also from Abigail Ahern, and then over here I've got some more of those coasters. These are really good. These are from Yankee Candle, and they are basically a wick trimmer so you can get right down into a candle jar and trim the wick, which stops the candle smoking. This vase is from Anthropology, and this candle is Aromatherapy Associates. 
A few coffee table books here. We've got a concrete one, Hotel de Cap Eden Rock. That is the most beautiful hotel. If ever you get the opportunity to visit it, I highly recommend you go there for a drink. It's absolutely stunning. And a Bauhaus book as well. And then on top, we've got the thumbs up London statue, which you may have seen in Trafalgar Square. And I got this miniature version of it from Tiger. We've got this Paul McCarthy print up here, which is pretty much doodling, but it's got nice uh, colors to it, nice and muted. And then this lamp came from a charity shop. And down here, we've got this uh, linograph, I think you call it, from our friend from Japan. Another skip find was this metal uh, trunk which we keep candles in, it's literally full of candles. And I picked up this box, which is full of wedding invitations from one of those tourist shops in Egypt when we went for a, a ridiculous holiday there actually, but um, that's another story. Then over here, we've got this stained glass window and this bowl that my mum's friend made, who's a potter and a giant Ikea vase that I get out every now and then whenever we have big flowers that we want to put in something. In front of the fireplace, we have this trunk. When I first moved to London, I actually lived in a hostel. It was kind of like halls, but for creatives who've just moved to London for the first time. And they actually had a luggage room that they had all this luggage in from all the years gone by. And they decided to clear it out one day and they threw out all of the old trunks and all the old suitcases, including this one, which I rescued. I've had it ever since. So it's a really nice memory for my time there. And also it's very handy for storing bedding in, which is what we do now. And I've just got a few candles on here. You might notice that they're at one end because I like to put my feet up on that end and put a, a throw over it. Here we've got a mahogany one from H&M, gold and myrrh from Muji, gin and tonic from Oliver Bonus. That's a really nice one. And this one's from Heels that our friends got for us. And that is Earl Grey and Birch. I like to have a few different ones on the go, so you get too familiar with one smell if you keep burning the same one, you can't smell it, so I like to mix them up. Our sofa came from our rental property. Our landlord kindly gave it to us because he was getting rid of it, and I recovered it from a company, um, which I'm going to link below. I think they're called BEMS and you can choose all different covers. They'll send you out fabric samples and get any Ikea sofa recovered, including many Ikea sofas that are discontinued. So if you do pick up a second hand one, that's a great little tip of what you can do with it. On the back, we've got this rug from Marrakesh, actually from the Atlas Mountains, where I had to haggle for that. And that was a interesting story as well. Uh, basically, the man would not let me leave the shop without buying this rug. So, um, very uncomfortable experience, but actually I really like it and it now sits on the back of the sofa. And then we've got a few cushions. You've seen these in halls, I think. Uh, so we've got Urban Outfitters. Oh, this is a new one. This is a thrift store find and this is from Miss Oni Home. And that was, I think four pounds. So great little find, because those are pricey. Then we've got H&M, Urban Outfitters, Charity Shop, Urban Outfitters, Urban Outfitters, and this wall blanket my mum gave me for Christmas. These paintings, we just bought both of the frames from a charity shop. I think, again, they were 50 pounds each, and then actually painted what's inside. So another little DIY with a couple of Farrow and Ball tester pots. So we went for the nice new colors that they've got, this lovely yellow and blue, if I can find the colours, I'll link those below as well for you. But yeah, if you've got a frame that you like, don't worry about the print, you can do the print yourself. And I just think the colours work really nicely, so you can see that there's um, a hint of those in the sofa and in the stained glass window at the back. So yeah, that's all come together quite well, I think. I'm pretty sure you get it by now that obviously our style is very eclectic and we like to mix and match things and we like to upcycle things and yeah, just think outside the box a little bit. So. Uh, things will be very different <laughs> in our place, but yeah, I hope you like the style. I mean, that's the reason why we watch these videos half the time, isn't it? We want to have a little look at other people's houses, and of course it may not be to your taste, and that's absolutely fine. If you've seen anything that you uh, thought that I could do differently as I've been showing you around as well, feel free to let me know in the comments below, because I absolutely love hearing other people's opinions. When you've lived in the same place for a long time, it's very difficult to see what can be changed with it. And I'm really good at sort of 
offering tips to other people what to do with their places, but I do find it much more difficult to do things in our place, so I would love, love, love to hear your opinions. And finally, the light fitting, which we picked up again at Crystal Palace Antiques, and that was £45, which I think looks brilliant. I love the fact that this looks like it could have always been here. You know, it's quite old, it's an antique and it was working. Obviously, we just had to get a professional electrician in to fit it, but I think it looks really cool. You may notice that the light bulbs don't even match. That is typical us, but <laughs> never mind. At least they're all working. That's a start. So I think that's everything. I hope you enjoyed this look around our lounge. I'm really pleased with how it's looking at the moment. It's got a lot of our personality into it. There's lots of little stories with different items uh, that are in this room, which I really love and I think so important when it comes to interiors. And I'd love to know what you think of it. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything that you would change, any items that you really liked or anything that's inspired you that you've seen as we've gone around. If you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful or inspiring, and I will see you very soon. Thanks for watching, bye.